So going over the law for Newton's law of cooling, Newton's law of cooling states that the rate of cooling of an object is proportional to the temperature difference between the object and its surroundings, provided that this difference is not too large. Now this, also, this law also applies to warming. Now if we let t of t be the temperature of the object at time t, and t subscript s would be the temperature of the surroundings, then we can formulate Newton's law of cooling as a differential equation. We would have dt divided by dt, which is equal to the constant k times the temperature t minus the temperature of the surroundings, where k is the constant. Now we would solve this equation as a separable differential equation by the method of section 7.3, but an easier method is to make the change of variable y of t, which is equal to t of t minus the temperature of the surroundings. So because the temperature of the surroundings is constant, then we have y prime of t, which is equal to t prime of t. And so the equation becomes dy over dt, which is equal to the constant k times y. So we can use equation two to find an expression for y from which we can find the temperature t. In example four, we're using Newton's law of cooling to predict temperatures. So a bottle of soda pop at room temperature, 72 degrees Fahrenheit, is placed in a refrigerator where the temperature is 44 degrees Fahrenheit. After a half an hour of the soda pop has cooled to 61 degrees Fahrenheit. So in part A, we want to find out what is the temperature of the soda pop after another half an hour. So we're going to let T of T be the temperature of the soda after T minutes. The surrounding temperature in the refrigerator is 44 degrees Fahrenheit. So Newton's law of cooling states that dt over dt is equal to the constant k times the temperature minus 44. Now, if we let y equal t minus 44, then y of 0 would then equal t of 0 minus 44, which is equal to 72 minus 44, which is 28 degrees. So that means the room temperature subtracting the surrounding temperature would be 28. So y of 0 would then equal 28 using the differential function dy over dt equals the constant k times y. So now we can use equation 2 knowing that the initial y of 0 is 28. So y of t now is going to equal 28 times e to the exponent of k times t. Now we are given that t of 30 is equal to 61. And that means 30 minutes, a half an hour, and it's cooled at 61 degrees Fahrenheit. So since y of 30 would equal 61 minus 44, that would give us 17. So now we would then write these two equal to each other. We would have 28 e to the 30 k, which is equal to 17. We can divide both sides by 28, take the natural log of both sides, and then solve for k. And if we do that, we would get k, which is equal to the natural log of 17 over 28, divided by 30, which is approximately negative 0.01663. So now that we have our constant, now we can write our new function, which is y of t, which is equal to 28, e to the negative 0 0.1, point, sorry, negative 0.01663t. There, t of t would then equal 44 plus 28e to the negative 0.01663t. And then we want to find out when the, at, in this case it says, uh, what is the temperature of the soda pop after another half an hour? So that means you have the first half an hour and second half an hour, which ends up giving you 60. So now we're going to plug in 60 into this function. And when we use order of operations, we would get approximately now 54.3. So after another half an hour, the pop has cooled to about 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Now part B, it says, how long does it take for the soda pop to cool to 50 degrees? So that means we would have T of T would then equal 50. 
So we're going to set this equation equal to 50 and then solve for t. So we subtract 44 to both sides to get 6. Divide both sides by 28. And then in order to get t by itself, we're going to take the natural log of both sides and then divide it by negative 0 0.1663. So therefore, t is going to equal approximately 92.6. And that's 92.6 minutes. So we can convert that to 1 hour and 33 minutes. So the pop cools to 50 degrees after 1 hour and 33 minutes. Now, if you note that in example 4, we had the limit as t approaches infinity of t of t, which is equal to the limit as t approaches infinity of 44 plus 28e to negative 0.01663t. So if we plug in the limit for the second term, we would get 0 times 28 plus 44. So 44, which is to be expected. So the graph of the temperature is shown. So therefore, you can see the graph and where it's leveling off.